Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Gina and in today's video we're going to be tackling something that's making me very excited and very very nervous. So we're going to try and replicate the uh, dining room table and chairs for the 70s interior and I'm going to be using a mix of uh, basically matchsticks and tin foil. So I want to get that really shiny chrome look on the legs of the table and the chairs. Uh, the tin foil will be able to do that. I can I could paint it but it's going to be a matte finish on the wood and but I want something that's going to be really shiny so I'm going to give this a go I've never done it before that's the reason why it's making me quite nervous um, but I'm also quite excited because I can kind of see how it can could come together in my head uh, now we've just got to put it into a <laughs> into practice so yeah let's get started I've got my inspiration photo and also I've got the plan that I drew up in my last video and to get the size of the dining table and I've also got some size for the chairs. So what we're going to need is some matchsticks, um, some tin foil, craft knife, a pencil, some glue and just some scrap pieces of uh, matte board. So to begin with all I'm doing is taking the plan that I drew in the last video which is the size of the table and just marking out um, the matchsticks and then just cutting those down to size. So doing that um, to create um, basically the frame of the table and luckily enough, not that this was actually planned, there's two full sized matchsticks that fit down either side which is great. Now all I need to do is start to glue them into place. I wasn't too sure how strong this was going to be um, but then also I thought well if it wasn't too strong I could wrap some paper or something like that around it. I haven't needed to do that, it's actually quite strong and also the uh, tin foil wrapped around it as well um, also helps strengthen it. So just the same process for the chairs as I did with the table, it's just using that pattern and cutting out the lengths and then um, just gluing them together. So this is just one side of the chair so we make two of those. And then to cover the chair, uh, we'll cover the sides actually in the tin foil. I'm just um, using the dull side of the tin foil and covering that with um, a glue stick. I actually changed my mind later on and use um, sort of a craft glue instead. Um, but this actually was good. Um, it just sort of immediately created a tacky surface for the um, matchsticks to stick onto. And then I'm just going to start cutting away the tin foil where I don't need it. So just from the top and the bottom. And then also I'm just going to try to wrap the, I'm wanting to wrap the tin foil around the pieces of wood. But I also need to make sure I cover any corners or anywhere where it's not um, going to sort of wrap around nicely. Um, it's probably a little bit hard to see on here how it creates the corner. It's a corner. It's a bit easier to see once we get to the table. And then once I've sort of cut away um, pieces of the tin foil, then I'm just going to start wrapping it around um, each um, back of the chair and the seat part of the chair, which I'm doing here now, and then obviously the legs. And I do that for the sides of the chair, as well as um, some of the there's two pieces that will join the two sides together so I make sure that I, I've wrapped those also. Um, this is really really fiddly and really really tiny um, so it just took a little bit of practice and I must say that um, doing six chairs, so 12 sides, this is only the second one, by the time I'd kind of got through to doing all of them I kind of got into a, a, quite a nice little rhythm. So here's the um, pieces that will attach the two sides together. There'll be one at the front and one at the back that will create um, really where the seat goes. So I'm just um, wrapping that tin foil around them and just cutting it off because I don't want to make it too bulky. I mean tin foil is pretty thin but I still don't want it to um, be too bulky and at this, this particular scale it doesn't take much for it to sort of bulk out. So here I'm just joining the two pieces together just at the height of the seat. So like I say there's one at the back um, and I just want to try and make sure I line that up and get that as straight as possible. And then also just one at the front. Um, so just trying to 
make sure it's as square as I can get it um, and then I'm just going to let it dry. Once it's dry we're going to um, create some use some mat board and I just cut it down to the height that I want and then I just use that same height for all of the chairs and then I'm just um, eyeing it up and marking it and cutting it to length and then just gluing it in place. Uh, and then same for the seat as well. And what I actually found is that once I once I put all of this into place, it actually helps strengthen the whole chair as well. So just a wee bit of glue on either side, and then just popping that seat in. It's a little bit far away, but um, hopefully you can kind of see and get a bit of an idea of what that's starting to look like. So it's nice and shiny, um, and it's got that um, white seat and white back. So this is the table top, so again I'm just going to use the same process as what I did for the chairs. So just using that uh, glue stick just to hold it down into place. Um, and then I'm just going to cut the tin foil down a little bit into size. Um, and then, uh, so this is really where we can um, see where the corners, how I've done the corners. So I've just cut little strips along each, in line with each part of the um, table and then just folding those up and over. And then I'm just going to cut out the middle so that will allow me to wrap the um, each side around the uh, matchsticks uh, as you can see I'm doing here. So the corners are already in place so they're all covered already with uh, tin foil. And then I'm just wrapping um, each side around uh, just to create that frame, um, which is which is what I'm doing here. This is where I sort of thought maybe this particular side might be a bit uh, weak, just with budding the two matchsticks up together. But I didn't even notice it. It's actually um, pretty strong. And then, like I say, by the time I've wrapped the tin foil around it a couple of times, it's um, it's strengthened everything up. Uh, and then also once the tabletop goes on, it's actually helped strengthen it up even further. So this is um, this was a sort of a bit of a tedious process, and as you can imagine with the chairs as well, it's sort of um, sort of a bit repetitive. So here I'm just checking the height of the table, and in, from the inspirational piece, uh, it looks like the height of the chairs are basically the same height as the table. So that's what I'm going to use as my guide. And so just using the pattern that I've used for the chairs, I'm just going to cut the table legs to that same size. So at least I know that the heights will be all the same. And then just so, you know, just following the same process um, for covering the legs, just using a bit of glue stick to um, to actually wrap the, or to hold the stick in place onto the, onto the tin foil and then just wrapping it around um, each of the legs. So I've just done this on a rather large piece, but I'm not intending to use all of it. So just cutting it down to size, just like I've done on the chairs as well. And um, and then just making sure that each of the legs is um, fully covered um, with tin foil. So once they're all done, then it's, um, then we need to start need to just put it all together. So. Um, I just needed something to hold it up at 90 degrees and as you can see here the tape is too short. So I've just swapped that out for a, um, some Mod Podge, a, a tub of Mod Podge and then just um, some glue as well. So then just gluing the legs, uh, one, um, I'm just going to glue one side at a time until it's dry and then I'm just going to go back and glue the other side so you can sort of see here that it's all glued together. It's pretty much dry but it's actually still the legs itself, um, I'm not happy with how they um, are wobbling around. So I'm just going to strengthen it up with uh, very small pieces of wire. This is quite a thin gauge of wire. I think it's, I'm not too sure what the gauge is. But I'm just going to make these little L brackets to, um, and then glue those into place. And I'm going to glue them. There'll be two on each leg, one down each, uh, one down the length of the table, and then one down the, the shorter side. So yeah, there'll be two brackets on each leg, and that will help strengthen it up. I mean, the wire itself isn't that strong, but the whole piece is actually quite small anyway. So um, all in all, it, I mean, it's not going to be played with or moved around, but it's definitely going to help um, strengthen it up. So I've just gone through and done every single corner, 
And now I'm just going to put the tabletop on. So this is the same um, material that I use for the glass. Um, it's just a very thin sort of plastic, same sort of material as you get in packaging. Um, it probably should have been a bit thicker, but I'm really stoked with actually how it's turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was actually a lot of fun to put together. Um, clearly, I overthink things far too much and was probably um, scaring myself more than my ability. So um, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I mean, it could have been um, a little bit neater and, you know, the finish could be a little bit better. But for the first time around and considering I'd never done something like this before, I'm really stoked with how it's turned out. So, yeah, don't forget to like uh, this video uh, if you're wanting to see more of what's coming up next so we've got a few more things to do in that particular room um, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so every time I post a video you'll get uh, you'll get notified anyway but thanks very much and we'll catch you in the next one